Hi, I'm Janice and I hope you're all doing well. So recently I've been making more Sydney videos and I've been receiving some comments or messages from you guys who are actually about to come to Sydney, whether it be like specific questions or if I have any tips for you all. So I figured, why not just make a video about it? So here are 13 things to know before coming to Sydney. Once you land in Sydney and before you even go through immigration, look to get one of these guides. This is the official Sydney guide. You can usually find it as you are making your way towards immigration. This is a pretty good guide, but why I want you to get this is because they have vouchers at the back. So if you're looking to do, you know, really touristy stuff in Sydney, such as visit the Sydney Aquarium or Madame Tussauds or Taronga Zoo. They have coupons at the back that helps you save anywhere between like 10 to 30% off. Um, so yeah, grab one of these books. It's just an easy way to save a little bit of money when you're traveling to Sydney. And you can usually find an entire wall of these guidebooks. So grab one of them. Secondly, Border security in Australia is quite strict. When coming into Australia, you need to fill out an incoming passenger card. This is typically given to you when you're still on the plane, but you can also find it as you're making your way through to immigration. On this card are declarations relating to customs and quarantine. So for example, there are certain foods that you can't bring into Australia. I've included in my description a link to the sample card that's on the Australian Border Force website, so you can see what declarations are actually on the card. Now that you've gone through immigration, welcome to Sydney. Um, there's free Wi-Fi at the airport, so that's always handy. Now there are three mobile phone networks in Australia. There is Optus, Telstra and Vodafone. There's an Optus and Vodafone kiosk at the Sydney International Airport. So if you want to speak to someone about what SIM card to get, you can do that there. Depending on your budget and your duration of stay, your needs might be very different. So what I've done is I've included a link in my description to a website called Whistle Out. They do a really good comparison of the best mobile phone plans for travelers in Australia. Okay, now getting out of the airport. There are a few ways to get out of the airport. You can take the train, you can get an Uber or a taxi, or you can get someone to pick you up. To catch a train in Sydney, you can use either a contactless credit card or debit card or the Opal card. In my opinion, the Opal card is your best bet. An Opal card is free, but they have minimum top up amounts. $35 if you're at the International Airport station, usually just $10 anywhere else. When you enter the station at either Sydney Domestic Airport or Sydney International Airport, there is a station fee that you have to pay and it's $14.87 if you're an adult and that's on top of the actual fare. So for example, if you're traveling from the International Airport station to Central Station, the total cost of that trip would be $17.40. So if you have three or more people with you, or even two people, depending on where you're going, it might not be that much more expensive per person if you were to split a taxi or an Uber. And if you are getting an Uber or a taxi, there are directions that take you to either the taxi stand or the Uber pickup zone. Now, while we're on the topic of transport, let me quickly talk about transport in Sydney. The app that I'd recommend you download is the TripView app. Pretty much you select where you wanna go and it tells you when your next train or bus or metro or light rail is gonna be. There are sometimes delays on Sydney transport, especially during peak hour or really, really bad weather. Worst if it's both at the same time. So take that into account when you're commuting to places using public transport. I also wanna make you aware of some of the travel benefits when you commute on Sydney's public transport, such as the weekly travel reward, where if you pay for eight journeys in one week, and that's between Monday to Sunday, with your Opal or your contactless credit or debit card, any other trip that you take for the remainder of that week will be half price. There's also a Sunday travel cap where you can commute on trains or metros, buses, ferries for the entire day and it's capped at $2.80. There are a few other benefits. I won't list them all out in this video, but if you're interested in reading about them, I've also linked it in my description. All right, now let's talk about the weather. 
So December to Feb is summer, March to May is autumn, June to August is winter, and September to November is spring. I wanted to give you guys some like average temperatures for each of the seasons, but I don't know them off the top of my head, so I looked it up online on a site called australia.com, and here are the numbers. It is currently spring, and according to australia.com, the average temperature is between 11 to 23 degrees. But let me tell you, this entire week, and it is the 17th of October today, it feels a lot hotter than 23 degrees. During spring, I'd be comfortable with jeans and a t-shirt. Most people actually feel more comfortable in shorts and a t-shirt. If you're traveling around this time, I'd recommend bringing like a light jacket as well because at night it might get a little bit chillier, but it, it doesn't get too cold in my opinion. During summer, they say that the average temperatures are between 18 to 25 degrees. And honestly, I just recall summer being like, a lot hotter than that like you know mid to high 30s sometimes even going over 40. when it's summer in sydney and it's not even summer it is still spring everything in the car is extremely hot don't let this buckle accidentally touch you because it's like getting a this hot iron on your skin and the steering wheel hot to touch so summer in australia shorts and t-shirts anything more is way too hot Temperatures for autumn is around 14 to 22 degrees and temperatures in winter it averages around 8 to 17 degrees. Like winter in Australia, it does get cold, but I'm usually fine if I wear, you know, long jeans and then a sweater and then another jacket and then I bring a scarf in case I need it. And while I'm on the topic of weather, I also wanted to talk about the sun here in Australia. The sun is quite harsh. And I wear sunscreen every single day. I slap 50 SPF on my face, rain, hail, or shine. And I am quite sun sensitive, which is why like, I still have a face full of freckles. But you know, when you come to Australia, just make sure you are being sun safe and being sun smart. Wear sunnies, wear a cap, wear sunscreen. It's why I wear a cap in all my videos. I don't do it for the fashion, but I have a feeling you can already tell. Moving on. If there are particular restaurants that you really, really want to visit when you're in Sydney, make sure you book them in advance, especially if you're wanting to visit on a Friday night or a Saturday night. And a good booking website to use is something called Dimmy. I think it's called The Fork now, but it's just an online booking system um, and it's pretty easy to use. I'll link it in my description as well. All right, tip number nine. You can pretty much pay with card at most places in Sydney. I rarely ever carry cash with me and I don't actually know where would be the best place to exchange cash in Sydney. So if you do know, um, do let us know in the comments below. And while we're on this topic, I wanna talk about tipping. There is no expectation to tip in Sydney. 95% of the time, the price you see is the price that you pay. I say 95% of the time because on Sundays and some public holidays, there are surcharges at some restaurants and some cafes, but you'll see that in your receipt as well. Tip number 11, if you wanna come shopping when you're in Sydney, great. I think we have a good variety of shops for that. You know, I've been to cities where shops don't close even at 11 p.m. But in Sydney, most shops in Sydney close at 5 p.m. With the exception of Thursday, which is late night shopping, and most shops close at 9. So keep that in mind if you're looking to shop in Sydney. Probably do it before dinner is what I'd suggest. Tip number 12 is a bit of a random one, but I find these things interesting, so I'm going to tell you about it anyway. When you are on an escalator, stand on the left so that people that want to walk up can walk up on the right. And even with like shared staircases, I usually actually walk on the left. Yeah. Okay, I can't finish this list without talking about one thing that I'm completely obsessed with. I personally think that coffees in Sydney are pretty good. Um, one of my favorite places to get coffee in Sydney CBD is a place called Gumption Coffee. But honestly, there are so many other shops in Sydney that does a good cup of coffee that, you know, don't stick to one, like try different places and see what you like. And um, try a flat white as well and, and see if you like it. And that concludes this list. This is just a very basic list of things to know before coming to Sydney. However, if I've missed out on a very essential tip and you're like, how the hell did she miss out on this? 
please let me know in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I post new videos Tuesdays and Fridays. Check them out if you have time. Hope you have an amazing rest of the week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. If you're still watching, here's an additional tip. There are so many flies in summer, so the less time you spend with your mouth open, the better. And on that note, I'm gonna stop talking.